So a lot of us have been there. You've been learning French for three, four, five, six years, and you still lack confidence in your accent, and maybe you have no idea how the words on the page come to sound like that romantic French that you hear in songs and movies. In this video, I will tell you literally all the secrets to perfecting your French pronunciation that for some reason no teacher will ever tell you, and it's really hard to find this information on the internet. This isn't about shaming anyone who doesn't have a perfect accent in French, but more to get you thinking about French and languages in general in a more nuanced manner. As we know, accent is a very important part of the phonology of a language, how a language sounds, and this video will give you those building blocks so that you can actually try your best in achieving that accent. If your aspiration is to sound like a native in French, then you must get rid of the aspiration in your speech. <laughs> in American English, there are certain consonants that are aspirated, which means a puff of air leaves your mouth when you say them. The P, T, and K sound are good examples. Put your hand in front of your mouth and say paint, town, camera, You'll notice that there was a puff of air that released at the beginning of each of those words, and consonants like this are not aspirated in French. So it's parler, tomate, caméra. With P, you should just be popping your lips without any exhale involved, and that should help you make the correct sound. Dentalized T and D. French isn't unique in this. There are a lot of languages that have dentalized T's and D's, which means that you're using the back of your teeth to make the T and D sound. In English, if you notice, when you make the T and D sound, your tongue is touching the roof of your mouth. T -t. But to make these sounds in French, you want to move your tongue to your teeth. Tomate, tortue, direct, directeur. And you know how to make these sounds. If you say the word this in English, or that, clothing, your tongue is pretty much in the same spot that it needs to be to make the dentalized T and D in French. The E sound. So this is something that is very minute, but I think it makes a big difference in the ease at which you can speak French. The E sound in French and English are actually slightly different. I'm sure in class you were told that C and C are the same word pronunciation-wise, but in French, the E sound is made with your tongue a little bit closer to the back of your mouth. If you haven't noticed already, this video is a lot about increasing the awareness of the inside of your mouth. So I want you to imagine your tongue. This is the front of your mouth. This is the back of your mouth near your throat. And take your tongue and raise it to the roof of your mouth so that it kind of blocks the airflow. And now you say C. Versus in English, your tongue is relaxed and you say C, C, C. Now you might be wondering, this is really nitpicky, why does this matter? This is how French sounds naturally flow into one another. I try to imagine words as something that are trapped in your mouth and they're trying to get in through different parts of your mouth to get out as smooth as possible. When you're learning a new language, you probably feel this a lot. You're trying so hard to get these sounds out of your mouth that your mouth is not used to making because your mouth is in a very specific shape to speak your native language. When you change which language you're speaking, you need to kind of change the shape of your mouth. You need to change where the sounds come out of so that all of those sounds can flow out really freely. One thing that French has a lot is nasal sounds, like on. So if you take this sentence, for example, si on va, to make a nasal sound, you are again blocking the passage of air in your mouth. If your tongue is relaxed, si, on, va, it becomes a lot harder for these words to flow through your mouth, si, on, va. It's hard to say that quickly, especially when you multiply that by all of the sounds involved in a sentence. Versus, if your tongue is already a little bit up, si, on, va, si, on, va, it becomes a lot easier to have these sounds flow. If you've been on my channel for a while, you're probably an expert on diphthongs. It's when one vowel sound flows into another. So, take, a, land, and, right, i. French, for the most part, does not have diphthongs. So one vowel is one sound. Your mouth shouldn't change shape when you're saying it. Hôpital, déjà, déjà, soup, caméra. The reason I'm using words that are similar to English is so that you can compare. In English, we say soup, oop, but in French, it's soup. In English, it's camera, but in French, it's caméra. Caméra. In English, we often say déjà vu, like day, but in French, it's dé, é, déjà. And if you use the dentalized D from the beginning, it's déjà, not déjà. In English, the word hope, o, hope, but in French, o. Hôpital. Hôpital. So now for the accents on the E's, which I'm surprised to find that a lot of French learners don't know what the accents are called, so let's go over them. 
This one is accent aigu. This one is accent grave. The little cap is accent circonflex. And the two dots is tréma. So first of all, accent aigu and accent grave sound very different. Aigu is very easy to remember. Aigu makes the a sound. Télévision. J'étais. Versus accent grave makes somewhere in between an e and an a sound. It's not like e like elephant, but it's not so much like a a sound. Très bien. Après. So this is one of the dead giveaways that you're not a native speaker is if you're pronouncing accent grave with the e sound. You shouldn't say après, you shouldn't say très, it should be très, not très, après, not après. The perfect word to remember accent aigu versus accent grave is the word une élève. Élève. Accent circonflex is basically the same sound as accent grave, so it's not a crepe, it's une crêpe. Tréma will always appear on the second of two vowels, and it signifies that those two vowels need to be pronounced separately. So the country Haiti, in English it's Haiti, like one vowel sound, but in French it's Haiti. Coincidence, Noël. As for the E's that don't have accents, you're supposed to pronounce them with the E sound because if you remember from day one of French class, A, B, C, D, E. Obviously, when words end with ER, that makes the A sound. We know that, parler, appeler. But the E's that are in the middle, appeler, ramener, acheter. This is also a dead giveaway that you are not a native speaker, and I think I make this mistake a lot when I'm speaking quickly, is saying appeler or acheter instead of acheter. I think the U sound in French drives learners crazy, and it's also one of those sounds that I don't think is very difficult to make, it's just not explained properly. To make the sound, I want you to basically create as little space in your mouth as possible, as if you've just bitten a lime or a lemon or something. Like, if we're picturing the inside of my mouth, the back of my tongue is pretty much flush up against the roof, and then this bottom part of my jaw is a little bit up as well, so there's less space in general. And then in this space, this is the roof of my mouth, this is my tongue, there's a little tube of air that is allowing the sound to pass through. So my tongue is like a this shape. Obviously the outside of my mouth is making a puckering shape. And that's how you get the sound in tortue. This distinction of the U versus U sound in French are very important. Vous means you, whereas vu is the past participle of to see. The A sound that you find in French is quite different than the English A sound that you find in class, task, snack. I'm not talking about the A sound in French that opens up words like appeler, acheter, but more the A sound that appears in the middle of words. Baguette, caméra, placard. In English, the A sound is very tense. Your tongue is very tight. Your jaw is in a very specific position. But in French, I want you to relax your jaw a little bit. Not so much that it's like ah, but not so tense that it's ah. Somewhere in the middle, ah. And I want you to relax your tongue a little bit as well. Caméra. In English, camera. In French, caméra. Je is actually sh. A lot of French speakers shorten things like je m'appelle to je m'appelle, je suis to je suis, and je pense to je pense. French has a lot of shortcuts. Tu as esta, tu es esté. This is just something to notice when you're listening to French TV shows, movies, songs. Notice how often French speakers may cut off things like je and instead say sh. The French L is a lot lighter than the English L. In English, we tend to use more of our tongue to make the O sound. So in English, the way you're likely making the O sound is that you're taking the tip of your tongue and putting it around the back of your teeth, but then this back of your tongue is also raised a little like this. O, la, lullaby. Whereas in French, you're relaxing the back of your tongue, and this tip is a little bit more on the roof of your mouth. It's not quite so on right behind your teeth. Uh, la, lapin, lettre. Letter. 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 That is all we have time for today, but there are tons of other nuances that are involved in making the sounds in French. I hope you got three things out of this video. The first is that I hope you have a greater awareness of your mouth and a greater appreciation for how much your tongue is working to make all of the intricate sounds involved in foreign languages. Don't underestimate what a greater awareness can bring to your language learning journey just by thinking a little bit more about the placement of your tongue, the placement of your teeth, and the rest of your mouth, you can become so much better at pronouncing sounds not just in French, but in any language. 
Number two is I hope you have a greater awareness of the sounds that exist in human languages. I really do find it astounding how many sounds your one mouth can make, and also how nuanced the difference between these sounds are, how speakers of certain languages can really hear the difference between certain sounds that speakers of other languages can't. Being aware of different sounds and languages is really the first step in being able to learn foreign languages because you can't learn what you don't know exists. And number three, I hope you were able to kind of see that accent is the reason that a language flows. I think especially in the United States, we don't really talk much about perfecting your accent, and especially because English is a global language, we don't care in English if people have different accents because that's truly the beauty of the language. But accent is a really important part of the culture and the authenticity of other languages, and it's not just something arbitrary that you don't really have to perfect. Perfecting this can actually help you speak a lot easier, it'll make the sounds in the language make more sense to you, and at the end of the day, you're going to get more out of the language when you're really appreciating all the sounds that exist in it. Tune in next week to find out all about the problems that I think exist not just in the American language education system, but in language teaching methods in general. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with someone that might find it helpful, and if you're not subscribed, please subscribe, we would love to have you. As always, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it, and I will see you next time. Bye!